The work really begins for me with the word. I read the script and the words are very important to me, so I spend a lot of time actually with the script. And um, I like to read uh, uh, historical uh, pieces about this particular time period. And I, and I, and I studied it, quite a few Hughes uh, biographies. And this period from the late 20s to the mid 40s uh, is a very interesting period in music. So I would listen to, you know, music of that period, what played on the radio, music from the films of that period. I then spent quite a lot of time with John Logan's script, imagining the film in, in my mind as to how Marty would shoot it. And then once I see the film, that really starts a very creative process of writing a lot of music based on the imagery of the movie. And what I try to do is kind of internalize the movie, and I try to kind of breathe it in a bit and then put myself into a position where, uh, you know, the ideas are flowing and it's very, uh, kind of a free association with the movie uh, and with the subject. And then there's a more technical part that happens later where I'm actually scoring the scenes. But I like that initial period of seeing the movie, feeling something, and then creating music about what you felt. Once I start doing my pencil sketches, I'm playing uh, pieces for Marty and Thelma, and the three of us would watch sections of the film. We would talk about specific scenes in the film, and we'd also talk about the pieces that I was writing. Quite often, I'm writing music away from the film, just based on Hughes's life. I would create thematic ideas based on Hughes's obsession. I would write thematic ideas based on Hughes's mechanical mind and the use of his, you know, the creation of his blueprints. And also I wrote a theme based on Hughes's ambition. The desire for speed is reflected in the music. It's, like, it's a, actually a major theme of Hughes's life. At one point, he was the fastest man in the world. He was the richest man in the world. And he also had made the most expensive, greatest epic movie in the world, Hell's Angels, which was made in 1928. And uh, he shot it first in, as a silent film, and then he shot it in sound. And uh, there's music in that film. I've even tried to grow out of that piece, you know, into my uh, composition. So to give you an idea of how the, the music from these films has, a, has worked, from the original films into our film is, is part of the process. The sound of the movie is particularly the sound of a, the symphony orchestra. It was really used to depict the type of recording and the sound of movies of the 30s, which is principally the time of our film. Marty was interested in using classical music to describe Hughes's time period of the aviator, 
and uh, by using Bach, it also gave me a good indication of how to make that transition from classical music into film music of the 30s. And uh, my score is based around mostly classical techniques in composition, fugues and canons. The fugues and canons, are, I thought, were interesting also because they describe Hughes's uh, mechanical mind because the fugues work in such specific ways, almost like uh, wheels within wheels, like the inside of a clock, really. And this, I felt, was a good technique, actually, uh, compositionally, to describe what was going on in Hughes's mind, because he had this very mechanical brain, um, and he also was very obsessive about the mechanics. Through the use of these themes, this is a way to keep a th the thematic thread of Hughes's life through the film, from the beginning of his work as a 24-year-old director making Hell's Angels, through his crash of uh, the XF-11, and to the flying of the Hercules. The score can keep the thread of Hughes's life in a linear way and helps to give a soul and a backbone to the story. Knowing the Hughes story and having read the biographies of Hughes and then seeing the film was fantastic. And uh, I think they've captured it amazingly well, and it's a beautifully made film.